सुखधम मरण करुण मिलन मधुर स्मरण करुण कालवश्यादिह सकल करुण समयादिपते अखिल करुण नमस्कार नमस्कार टू एवरी वन <laughs> Wonderful to have all of you here. Hello. <laughs> well, for those of you who are not here physically, uh probably for the first time in many months. or a thousand people here spread out in the garden maintaining social distance masked up i don't know they've come up come dressed up for the halloween or <laughs> for the virus <laughs> children are no more scared of those creatures of halloween because they also come masked It's quite a transformation. People wore masks to rob banks, <laughs> or people wore masks to scare other people. Now people wearing masks to save their own lives. It's a transformation. <laughs> well, unfortunately. uh united states uh, nearly 50% of the counties across the country are uh, going through an upsurge of uh, infections mm, it's also a second wave of infections happening in many european countries france germany uk all gone into a month long lockdown once again full lockdown total lockdown no moving out of the homes no visitors complete lockdown except for emergencies this means uh, after nearly 7 months uh, it's once again on a rampage india has dropped 30% in a week and recovery rate in india is over 90% Tamil Nadu has done very well in the last few weeks. Well, this indicates many things in terms of administrative management of how to manage this virus. I don't want to go into that detail, but the National Institute of Health in United States says their research says that it is not just only when you sneeze well all of you know this but you know it has to come as research findings that even when you speak aerosols are moving uh, it's okay just don't bother it's all right It's okay. It's all right. You try to move that here. No, it's all right. So, 
So even when you speak, especially if you speak harsh words, it'll go further if you speak. <laughs> if you're whispering sweet nothings, it'll be right here. <laughs> but speaking is spreading virus in a big way. One of the conclusions that this study is drawing is, if for fourteen days the entire world or humanity doesn't speak, let the birds to eat, <laughs> it is possible virus could be gone. I've been saying this from the beginning <laughs> because we are the carriers. If for fourteen days, if we simply sit in one place, meditating, mouth shut, maintaining distance from everybody else. That's the end of the virus. I've been saying this. They will say, oh, it's not that simplistic. But now it comes from a major institution like National Institute of Health. It must be true now. Well, uh, see, they're not only <laughs> one important part of a spiritual pursuit traditionally in India is called ekant. That means you be by yourself, you be alone. You're not in the company of people. Another is nishabd, that means you be silent. Well, this virus looks like it's bringing a spiritual moment for humanity. <laughs> We've been asking people to, you know, silence, you know how difficult it is <laughs> People come here with great aspirations, spiritual aspirations. And uh, I just say, okay, one week, uh, be in silence. After two days, no Sadhguru, please give me something else. <laughs> I didn't give you any hard work. I didn't ask you to deliver speeches. Just shut up and sit down. No. Because uh, I want you to understand, this is what spirituality means. What it means is that from being a, a surface kind of life, you become a more profound life. Being a more profound life means on one level, as creation made this, this is a complete life. If you look at yourself as a psychological case, which is what unfortunately a whole lot of people have turned out to be, now it's an incomplete life. If you look at yourself as life itself, if you experience yourself as life, this is a complete life. For a sustenance, it has to depend on a few things around like every other creature. But otherwise, in every other way, this is a complete life. Well, if I say this now, a uh, whole lot of people will go against me, but what's the problem? At least they can't speak now, you know <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> because this These desperate people spreading teachings in the world. Love is the core of the universe. One of the teachings going around. Of course, you have heard God is love. I'm, asked, I'm just telling you, do not send human emotions to the core of the universe. First thing is, there is no core. There's no central point in the universe where it's a core and love is emanating from that. How 
desperate and terrible human being you should be, that you should look so far for a little bit of love in your life. At least if you looked at the neighborhood, I can understand. <laughs> so, uh, these kind of teachings have made human beings feel that they're incomplete. Uh, you know, uh, what is that? Uh, what is this? Uh, okay. Already God Himself has chosen a soulmate for you because your soul is incomplete. And you know, you met the soulmate <laughs> and you, you also got married in heaven. Marriages were made in heaven, still made or no? I think that was before two thousand. <laughs> no, if you divorce before two thousand, I think it's before twentieth century. Nineteenth century, I think, marriages were made in heaven and you had a soul mate. A ah, body needs a mate, understandable. In uh, if you go to if you go down under to Australia, all the time they address you as a mate. <laughs> hey mate, I'm like. <laughs> How a mate? Am I sounding correct? Howdy, mate <laughs> So, uh, body needs a mate, understandable. Psychologically, if you are a psychological case, when I say a psychological case, maybe you have never been to your psychiatrist, maybe such a need has not come, maybe your family is managing you, on the couch, I mean <laughs> Or maybe your office people are bearing with you. But a psychological case means you have become a bundle of thoughts, emotions, ideas, opinions and prejudices. You have not tasted the being. This being is precious because it is for, for the sake of this being, this body happened. This brain happened, this intelligence happened, everything else, all the other arrangements we make is for this life. Accessories, many. Now so many accessories, now you don't know what's the real thing. Do you like <laughs> You know, I'm… Uh, I was talking to the… the largest car manufacturer in the world, the person who created this whole thing. And I was telling him, uh, you know, he's a huge uh, enthusiast of automobiles and airplanes. So we, you know, like he's over seventy-five years of age, but we were talking and… Mm, <laughs> and I said, see, for someone like you who's so involved with the internal combustion engine and the automobile and the mechanics of what it is, how it performs, all this is great passion for him. But I said, I saw your advertisements in the newspaper for your cars and it talks about le the leather trimmings and the stereo and all the accessories. The entire advertisement is about the paintwork, about the leather, about this, about that. I see that happening in United States also because most people are buying the car only for its paint work, for its leather, for its whatever other nonsense, not for the machine, the heart of it. Maybe a small percentage of people are looking at this. 
Because when I talk to people, I ask them, uh, what are you driving? I say, what engine? I don't know what, I never opened and saw. I got leather. Real leather, not artificial leather. Oh, if you wanted real leather, you should have been on a horseback. <laughs> it would be rubbing against you all the time, you know <laughs> So life has become like this on all levels. It's not about this life, it is about the accessories. So when your life becomes too much about accessories, not about the real thing, then uh, there are lots of problems. Because there is no end to how many accessories you can fix to your automobile or to yourself. In Tamil Nadu, there was a culture, now it's kind of largely gone out, about twenty-five, thirty years ago, we used to call certain cars as Amba Benz. For those of you who are not of Indian origin, who don't understand what I'm talking about, there used to be cars called ambassadors. If you have an ambassador at home, it's the best car we had in seventies, sixties. If you had an ambassador at home, one thing is, uh, you also need to keep two people, just for that. Well, uh, Coimbatore city was particularly famous for these ambassador cars because they kept them in full trim and they were called Amba Benz because always their hubcaps were Mercedes. <laughs> They're like the Mercedes symbol, so the tri-star of Mercedes was in the hubcap. They put the steering wheel of a Porsche, and all kinds of things, mirrors, lights, this, that, this. Oh, it would look like a Christmas tree when it's going. <laughs> then when I asked somebody, when I f uh, first came to… I knew Coimbatore was famous for this, because from Mysore, Bangalore, people used to go all the way to Coimbatore, stay there for ten, fifteen days, get them all fitted like this and come very proudly. We would think, oh my God! <laughs> because uh, they're driving a Christmas tree <laughs> So these Amba Benz, when I came to Coimbatore, I asked, how do they maintain these things? Said uh, very proudly, render all which are That means they got two people just to maintain the car, to keep it shiny and everything because, uh, you know, accessories are trouble, keeps falling off and things keep happening. So the same problem has happened to human beings, too many accessories, all the time concerned, something is falling off, you know. When you're an ambassador and your Mercedes hubcap falls off because it anyway doesn't fit properly, <laughs> lots of concern, you will lost a Mercedes Benz. So this is happening, though the most precious thing and the only goddamn thing that you have is life, you act like you have so many things. Yes, right now people are thinking they have so many things in life that they're losing. No, no, there's only life, rest is all accessories. Hubcap may fall off. Hmm? Then you drive without hubcaps. Suppose if the wheels fall off, uh, then you know like me, from a car I've come to your motorcycle. <laughs> if that goes off, maybe we'll go to a bicycle. If that goes off, we will walk. Huh? Hello? But we're alive. This matters. Hello? Everything in order, your bank balance is full, you have the biggest bank balance on the planet, you have the most number of clothes, you have jewels, you have a heap of diamonds, but you are dead. How's that? You like that? <laughs> Others will like it. <laughs> I want you to see this, 
I'm sure you've been to some funeral in your life. Hmm? Hello? You've been somewhere. You will see this man or woman who was so involved and accessories, accessories, accessories. Suddenly he, he or she is dead like this. He's just not interested in anything. Hello? You take the best food in front of him. You hang diamonds. You show him the biggest house on the planet. Hello? Dispassion, you know, this is spiritual quality. <laughs> Nothing moves the man. Well, right now you're moving and that's what is most important. The rest are accessories. I think all of us have lost some hubcaps in the last few months. <laughs> Everybody, all right. And don't think that is a joy. Oh, that is good, everybody has lost, not just me. <laughs> Spiritual process means every day, every day you must do this. All your accessories, your wealth, your place in the society, your education, the relationships, everything that you possess. Keep it aside at least for a few minutes, hmm? Just keep it aside, just be here, it's just life. This is important for you. To live well and to die well, this is important. This is what spiritual process means. Because you did not do it, this virus is dispossessing you of many things. Unfortunately, over a million people have died. But you're alive, we're sitting here alive, there's nothing to lament. It's time to behave consciously, responsibly, to ensure nobody else dies because of you at least. Huh? This much you must take care? Hello? Nobody should die because of you. But now National Institute of Health is saying, the best thing for this is for you to shut up. <laughs> you know, we are conducting a twenty-one day sadhana program where they're supposed to be silent, but they're <laughs> We are not enforcing it like Samyama or some other time where, because they've just some have come really to do sadhana, others have come just to be in a safe atmosphere. <laughs> because their towns and homes are not safe from the virus, they have come to the center where protocols are maintained and it's safe. And right now, we have a reputation both in the yoga center in India and here, the only one of the few places where nobody has been infected till now, after seven months. Mm -hmm. And we've been on the road <laughs> We've been on the road for uh, over thirty-six, thirty-seven days going through eighteen states. The entire team, we travel and come back without a single person being infected. So this is all it takes uh, that you… one thing is to shut up. Another thing is if you must speak, uh, you have a mask on. If you don't have a mask on, at least you don't look into somebody's face and talk. Simple things. Just being conscious, that's all. If you speak, there must be ten feet of empty space in front of you. Hello? See, I'm, I'm giving you such a respite for those of you who married and families and you know. <laughs> Hello <laughs> I hope both of you are here because you understand. Otherwise, if only one of you is here and you go home and say, Oh, Sadhguru is teaching you all these strategies against me <laughs> So,
So, uh, in some way, see, it's best. Uh, it's like this. For one who is looking at life as a possibility, everything turns out to be a possibility. I was uh, <laughs> looking at some kind of, uh, you know, something on the television. Uh, something about diamonds, they were talking about stealing diamonds, about transporting diamonds and things. I see that as a possibility and uh, something comes out of me for that. I see the leaves falling in the fall time, that also seems like a possibility. If you're looking at life as a possibility, you will see the possibility everywhere. If you are not looking at it that way, if you're looking at it as a problem, of course you will see problem everywhere. Everything is a possibility. Sun comes up, it's a possibility. Sun goes down, it's a possibility. Oh, Sadhguru, you make up your mind, which is the possibility, coming up or going down? <laughs> no, no, both are possibilities. The question is, can you ride it or not, that's all. Let me torture you with a couple of poems which, uh, which may be a little insulting for some people, but it's okay, it's a possibility, you know <laughs> So, uh, this is about the diamonds. No, this is about the possibility. It's titled as Carbon Life. Piece of coal that burns into ashes, with the right amount of striving can turn into diamond. Piece of coal that burns into ashes, with the right amount of striving can turn into diamond, stable and brilliant. Lest you go unshining, the carbon life that you are, sheer stability could make you eternal. Lest you go unshining, the carbon life that you are, sheer stability could make you eternal. Well, leaves are falling all over the place and you see already some trees are bare, some are colorful. This is called the leaf. After the final colorful dance of the fall time, after the final colorful dance of the fall time, falling away gracefully to carpet the land in numberless hues, falling away gracefully to carpet the land in numberless hues, waiting for the snows to turn the sap into sod, waiting for the snows to turn the sap into sod, a willing participant in the life process of recycle, a willing participant in the life process of the… of recycle, the leaf. Well, everything is a possibility, so is the virus. You wouldn't be silent by yourself. Now National Institute of Health is saying, it's good for you to shut up and if everybody shuts up for fourteen days, virus could be gone. Why can't we do it as a humanity? But some people have a itch. <laughs> they have to speak. This happened, you know. Uh, you know, in this country you won't see this, in India you will see this, in the nights, in… Uh, in towns and cities, particularly in small towns, you will see this. Well, a few dozen dogs will gather in the night somewhere. These are all street dogs, we still have them. Not the kind of uh, mechanical dogs that you walk on your leash, these are dogs. <laughs> they still pee where they want.
So they all meet. So uh, the dogs were meeting in the night. And then there was a dog leader, of course, a spiritual leader. <laughs> so, uh, the leader was always giving them talks, like me, telling you it's good to be silent. <laughs> no, I'm a messenger, I'm a ambassador for the National Institute of Health now, <laughs> all right? They could hire me now actually <laughs> So, uh, in many ways, the leader was always telling them how to break their slavery, how to become free, how to work towards their liberation, how human beings have enslaved them. You must reject these fancy belts, these chains, designer chains, it doesn't matter, these are all symbols of slavery. You should reject them. Some of the dogs uh, were proud of their studded belts, but they felt a little ashamed, but they covered it uh, when they came to the meetings like uh. <laughs> well, There was an uproar in India about this. Because traditionally in India, when a woman gets married, she is supposed to wear a sutra, it's called Mangal Sutra. It's an auspicious thread. Every year she is supposed to renew that thread. If the thread was prepared properly, it had certain significance for her well-being, health, and above all, it was a connection between the two people. But then renewing this thread became too cumbersome in recent times, so people started making chains. When they make chains, of course they made it in gold, because they made it in gold and your neighbor was having this thick chain, you made it this thick and your next neighbor made it that thick and that thick and now so slowly it is weighing a kilogram. And now uh, it has become a prestige in the society, how thick is your chain? In Tamil Nadu, you have How many sovereigns is your chain? Accordingly, that valuable your marriage is. <laughs> Slowly it's gone there. So I said uh, in Tamil Nadu, I was speaking in Tamil and I said, see, you, were, you wore a Mangal Sutra, it had a purpose. It would do something to you because every year it was prepared fresh and you wore it. It's al almost like renewing your vows for each other, a commitment for each other and a connection for each other. But now you're wearing a chain. A chain is a symbol of slavery that everybody knows in the world. Hello? Hello? If I say, you're in chains, it doesn't mean you're decorated, it means you're enslaved. I said, this is a symbol of slavery, what's happening here? I was new at that time to Tamil sensitivities. <laughs> a huge uproar, how can you speak against our gold chain? I said, whether the chain is steel or gold or whatever, it's about the same thing. Only in the marketplace, if you're planning to hawk it, ah yes, there is a difference. But otherwise, whether I bind you with a gold chain or a steel chain, what is the difference? At least if you use a, a stainless steel cable, Maybe even your husband cannot break it, nobody can steal it. Right now there is a certain crime in India called chain snatching, you know. Lot of people, youth who are on drugs, alcohol, these kinds of things, when they need money, they see these gold chains hanging around these ladies' necks 
and uh, they're coming in a bicycle or a motorcycle and snatching the chain and going away. At least if you put a steel cable, marriage would be secure <laughs> and nobody will snatch it. Well, this got a lot of flack for me <laughs> but I'm repeating this again. You have changed your… you have changed yourself in too many ways. Every day, if you don't keep your accessories down, you will get so chained, you think that is what makes your life. No, no, right you now, your heart is beating, you're inhaling and exhaling, this is what makes life. Hello? Yes. This is what makes life. And you're feeling wonderful, that is what makes life. Huh? You have blissed out, that is what makes life, not the hubcap. Mercedes hubcap. No, I didn't say you have a Mercedes car, I said the hubcap, okay? <laughs> well, I see in the United States also some, pe some people have uh, a Ferrari uh, logo on their Ford. It's all right, at least the first letter is same <laughs> and that is the most used in their vocabulary, the most used word is starts with F also. <laughs> it's okay, you know. <laughs> anyway, if you have such a thing going on with you, today also happens to be World Toothbrush Day. Hello? See, with the mask on, don't think you don't have to use your toothbrush anymore. <laughs> Nobody said that. Mask is on and you're not speaking by the advisory of the National Institute of Health. Now, why should I use the toothbrush? No, no, today is World Toothbrush Day, just in case in the early morning you came away. You must use it, otherwise mm, this happened. This happened on the Chennai beach. Chennai beach is a unique place. I won't describe the whole of it. <laughs> uh, there is a thing in… Uh, because Chennai is… Uh, generally people are sweating in any season, all right? So the only place where you may have some cool breeze is uh, sea breeze. If you walk on the beach, you'll feel cool. Otherwise, uh, it is a consistent summer. <laughs> a lot of people are watching me from Chennai. They agree with me, but they don't like me depreciating things. I'm not depreciating, I'm just describing, okay <laughs> So, uh, a man, Sankaran Pillai, was taking a walk on the Chennai beach. And uh, one of the things that pester you is, if you walk close to the water, the tiny little crabs, brown colored crabs which are almost translucent, running all over the place and they'll run over your feet and give you a tickle. So people walk little away. If you walk little away, there are other kind of tiny little things. All young uh, children, like uh, below twelve, fourteen years of age, who are entrepreneurs, before they go to school in the morning, they want to earn their little money. So they will come with something, they've got uh, either fried groundnut or boiled groundnut or sundal sundal, don't ask me about sundal, you must taste it, okay? It fires you up in the morning. <laughs> so, children trying to sell something to you, uh, they are very persistent, they have their own marketing technique. They will come and do like this, like this, like this for you. Uh, no, 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 no. No, no, I don't want kai. No, no, it doesn't matter, just buy it. <laughs> So just to get rid of the pest, 
you pay something and buy this and maybe throw it to the fish if you don't like to eat it. But the immediately the entrepreneur goes and he informs all the co-entrepreneurs <laughs> this guy, if you scratch him three times, he will buy. <laughs> then you see twelve different hands scratching you, <laughs> you have to buy everything that is there. <laughs> So one day Shankaran Pillai is taking his morning walk and uh, one persistent entrepreneur <laughs> follows him and says, sir, toothbrush, sir, toothbrush, toothbrush. He says, I don't need it and keeps walking, sir, 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 <laughs> sir, toothbrush, sir. Then just to get rid of him and say, okay, how much is the damn toothbrush? Thousand rupees, sir. <laughs> sir what? Thousand rupees for a toothbrush? What are you trying to do to me? I said, okay sir, at least, sir, homemade cookies I have, sir, just two rupees. He said, okay, two rupees and buys the cookies. Anyway, he's bought it, he doesn't want to throw it, he put it in his mouth. The entrepreneur was following him. You're a yuck <laughs> Tastes like shit. Then the entrepreneur says, yes sir, it is shit, homemade sir <laughs> And how about a toothbrush now? <laughs> Today is World Toothbrush Day. Please be… please be… Uh, conscious as to where you throw your toothbrush because you saw the terrible picture of a toothbrush sticking out of a, a turtle's nose. You've seen that horrible picture. So please don't use toothbrushes, don't throw it somewhere. I don't know if it's here in the Shopee, but in India we are selling bamboo-based toothbrush. I think it should come here also. <coughs> So, uh, this whole situation of virus, we shouldn't waste it. I was talking to, uh, you know, a very… Um, a top-level executive in India. So, I was having a conversation on the phone and I asked, uh, okay, what is happening? Is it, you know, India's industry and commerce recovering? He said, uh, no Sadhguru, as the saying goes, never waste a crisis. We are not wasting it, we are making this, this, this and hundred different things that they are doing to make use of this time. I said, this is fantastic. If, if business people have this much wisdom, people on the spiritual path, uh, hello? Never waste a crisis, it's given us time. See, I'm putting it to good use. I traveled around the United States and came back, which I would have never done with my schedules. <laughs> it's been a, a phenomenal process to touch all these Indian nations, meet many of those people, the leaders, common people, youth from Native American community. And uh, well, this material that we have captured, which is immense in the sense every day, I think the cameras have been rolling for anywhere between fourteen to sixteen hours a day. So for thirty-seven days it's been on, it'll take us maybe a couple of months before the first material really starts coming out. So look forward to that because there's lots of phenomenal and interesting material out there. Maybe the kind of stuff that you've uh, not generally used to, because these people live close to life, no accessories. No accessories, just life, strong life. It's important that you not only live, that you live strong. Living strong does not mean showing your muscles to somebody. Living strong means your level of experience is intense and enormous. 
your level of experience will become enormous only when your level of attention is absolute. If you're absolutely attentive to everything around you, oof, what's happening here is not a simple phenomenon in terms of life. It's too much. It's too much for anybody to grasp in one life. That much is happening, isn't it so? Hello? You want to come back again? <laughs> Some of you are nodding, okay, you are installment people. You did everything in installments, you bought a home in installments, you bought a car in installments, you also got married in installments, yes? Slowly. Uh, so you want to do your life also in installments, no. Oh, but I like life. If you like life, it's like this. I don't know, did you enjoy your school days? Everybody talks about it in a very nostalgic way, but actually when you go there and see most people didn't really enjoy it because they're worried about the homework, they're worried about this, they're worried about that, wanting to be number one in the class, all kinds of things. I really enjoyed my school days because I was not always at the school. <laughs> I explored the whole terrain and uh, I did so many things, let me not go into that. So, just because you enjoyed your school days, does it mean to say you would like to stay there? You eager to go to college or to something else, isn't it? The same goes for life. If you lived your life totally, it doesn't matter how good it's been, you will want to move to the next possibility of what it is. So those who say, no, no, I don't mind coming back a hundred times, is simply because you're not living totally, you're hanging on to a few things. You're just hanging on to the accessories of life. But if life is what you're experiencing, it is the natural tendency of life to move to the next possibility and the next, whatever it is. This is the nature of life. But it is your psychological framework which chooses comfort against life. Everybody is talking about comfort zone as if it's their wealth. What you mean is my prison, self-created prison is comfort zone, isn't it? Why are you not comfortable in the rest of the world? Why are you not comfortable with anything that comes your way? Including the virus, I'm saying. Now the virus people are also saying it not only kills you because now the fatality rate is going down, particularly in India. Some of the scientists there are saying, particularly in the age group of twenty to thirty, and in women for some reason, I don't know why, there could be a serious depletion of uh, brain power, a serious depletion of intellectual quotient. Degeneration of the brain starts with the virus. You may recover, but you know, already if you have soaked it in alcohol, if you have uh, ho put holes in it with uh, drugs, now with the virus, you could have a, uh, your upper chamber empty. Not me, if the scientists are saying this, it must be true because uh, we know in the yogic culture that this is… Uh, this may sound like uh, an extreme, but I'm sure after maybe twenty-five, fifty years, they'll come to this. In the yogic culture, it goes like this. If you sneeze, you lose your intelligence. Some loss will happen to you. So, you must control your sensations and not sneeze, not hold it. Not sneeze if it's possible. Essentially what they are saying is, if you cause any kind of upheaval in the system, 
loss will happen to your intelligence. That is, if you are in that kind of life where the sharpness of your intelligence matters that much to you, if you are just doing something, then it doesn't matter, then you won't notice up and down. Is it true that you have just a mild flu and little fever and sneezing, suddenly you start behaving like uh, you're already seventy-five for… Her. I'm sorry if I am insulting anybody, no, 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 we have very young seventy-five-year-old people. <laughs> you start behaving like you're old, whatever that is, hundred and thirty-five. I'm just making sure I don't insult anybody, yeah? <laughs> Is it true? You have just a flu for three days, you feel like you've grown old by many years. For those few days, you may recover after some time. But in this recovery, there is a loss of intelligence, which may not be measurable, but there is a loss. So in yoga we say, if you sneeze, you lose some of your brain. This is not physically that if you sneeze, your brain is coming out in the form of goo <laughs> Not that. But if you are sneezing, there is irritation in the system of some kind. Once there is irritation in the system, your brain power will go down. So keeping the body in such a way, that's why before they do anything, you know, people have this thing, I have a different way of doing it, but most yogis, before they do anything, they check, both the nostrils are clear and everything okay. Because just that will take away some of you. If you are wanting to scale the highest peaks, it matters. If you are… if you are climbing Mount Everest, even the tiniest grip you get on the rock matters, isn't it? If you're walking here on a paved pathway, people are continuously telling me, Sadhguru, let's put concrete. All this gravel, it hurts. So it's okay. Hmm? No, yesterday I stumbled. <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> because we very carefully crafted uneven pathways all over Isha Yoga Centre. Just now, three days ago, again the construction team is saying, Sadhguru, these stone pathways are too troublesome, shall we concrete the whole thing? Just three days ago, I have not spoken to them yet <laughs> The idea of creating uneven pathways is, there is substantial science about it today, neurological science, that when you walk on uneven pathways, your neurological system and your brain works in a certain way, which is very, very beneficial for you. If you walk on paved surfaces, you can walk without attention. That's not good for you at all. You must always walk with full attention. This is very important. Oh, then I cannot relax. That is what I'm telling you. You are… <laughs> you are misunderstanding laxity as relaxation and you're misunderstanding attention as tension. Attention is not tension. Attention is the only thing which makes you alive. If you have lost your attention, you have no life, isn't it? Hello? So, it's important that you keep yourself in such a way that uh, even if you're wearing a mask, you still don't sneeze, okay? A sneeze builds up, have you noticed this? There is a way, if you pay enough attention, it just goes down. Try this and see. Well, you have a bad cold and you may sneeze, that's different. But many times, small irritations happen, sneeze starts building up. Very rarely, that sudden irritation, somebody is blowing snuff in the air, Suddenly it'll blow out. Otherwise, most of the time it builds up, it takes ten, twenty seconds for it to build up. If you pay enough attention, it'll just go down. I'm saying if you bring attention to every aspect of life, everything is the way you want it, every aspect of life. 
So especially now that research is saying in case you get this virus, you are going to lose part of your brains. How much we do not know, but now the question is how much is left? <laughs> Say, how much can I lose? To calculate that, you must know how much is left, isn't it? <laughs> so, please, please ensure that you don't get infected. Nobody around you should get infected, huh? Hello? As a part of this, because this uh, vaccine may come, something may come, another virus may come. I'm just saying this is definitely a time to do this. I'm uh, with… Uh, I know with lot of resistance from our teams, I'm kind of making up my mind. In the next year, I think largely my travels will be contained. I will spend time either here at Triple I or in Isha Yoga Center in India most of the time. Running around the world is going to come down significantly. So this is the time for you also to plan how much time you want to spend here. For this there is a huge effort to build accommodations and things, please find out about that both here and in Isha Yoga Center in India. We want to create a space. Well, it's been on for some time now, but uh, because of excessive travel, we did not focus on it much. But now this is going to be the focus, those who want to seriously look at the possibility of uh, taking this life to its fullest possibility, that's all. This all spiritual process means. Spiritual process does not mean going away somewhere. It simply means taking this to fullest, fullest potential. I have my work, I have this, I have that. All this you did as accessories to life. Your career is an accessory to life. Your wealth is an accessory to life. Your home is an accessory to your life. Is that so? Hello? So, if life is your fundamental concern, Enhancing it to its fullest is natural concern. So in that context, we want to make sure for a substantial number of people, the necessary facility and the possibility is there. And um, as I am slowly getting grounded from travel, so uh, this will be a possibility both here and there, please make use of it. I don't know if there's time for a question, can we? Hello? Is that time for the online thing to go on? Okay, one question, quick. This question comes from Ashley in Memphis. Namaskaram Sadhguru. Incense has been used for thousands of years in almost every culture to invoke gods, support meditation, and for healing and medicinal purposes. Burning herbs and resins has been an especially big part of both Indian history as well as Native American history. Can you please speak about the significance of burning incense and how incense should be used in modern times? Oh, is that the reason I'm being smoked then? <laughs> And the question is from Ashley. <laughs> Incense is usually Ashley. Without ash, you know, there is no incense. <laughs> well, uh, the significance of this is there are certain substances when they burn. One thing is there is fragrance, of course which is pleasant for the nostrils. <clears throat> and uh, incense burning is about the atmosphere, not about you. Because different spaces, indoors especially, in different spaces there are different kinds of… one thing is smells, there's also different kinds of energy structures which will happen. 
the shape and size of the room will do this. This is why there is such a attention to the shape and size of the room. In Indian culture, there is a whole attention to the shape and size of the room in which you live. Because the shape and size of the room in some way, if it is not heavily ventilated, when I say heavily ventilated, from both sides two walls are open and it's happening, then it feels almost like outdoor, that's different. Most homes are not made this way because uh, they have neighbors, you can't open too many windows, <laughs> too many openings won't work, there is weather, there are many things, all right. And there is air conditioning, worse. So, different shapes and sizes kind of create different kinds of energy structures. These energy structures can, if they become very strong, can determ determine your psychological and emotional state, which either can be conducive or can become an impediment in who you want to be. So, certain substances like sandal in India, there is something called as samrani which is a very powerful thing, which is used even when people are ill. First thing they do is this and it is now been found it also kills certain types of bacteria in the air and also on the surfaces. So, especially if there is a sick person in the house, samrani everywhere. If they want to do some auspicious event, some running all over the place, it's a certain kind of resin which uh, a, a tree drips. Well, uh, <laughs> in this pursuit of some running, you will see in the forest there are massive trees. People would have carved into the tree because the, the trees look solid outside but inside there is a cavity. In that cavity, it will be dripping this resin. We do not know, at least I do not know what is the natural reason why these resins come out. But people go and gather this. It's a precious little material and you have to walk miles and miles to get substantial amount of resin. Because these trees have to be mature, that means they must be at least over thirty to fifty years old, otherwise you don't get it. Uh, this has a powerful impact on the atmosphere. It is not necessarily a fragrance, it is a different kind of thing that it clarifies the air, it just makes the atmosphere feel more lively. Fundamentally, it… whatever structures that are there, it will make indoor like outdoor. If you burn a mild amount, you shouldn't to put too much, then you will sneeze and lose your brains. <laughs> Just mild samrani in the house will make it feel like, though you're indoors, the feeling is of out outdoors because it's an un unstructured space. Especially if death happens in the family, samrani is burnt for up to eleven to twelve days because they want to clear that air completely. These are subtler aspects, but I'm little apprehensive of speaking about this in United States because there is already so much a new age, uh, you know. Because first when I came to Nashville, uh, someone in Nashville told me that Sadhguru, there is a spiritual uh, expo happening. I said, what? Spiritual expo? Even in India, it happens only once in twelve years <laughs> No, no, here every year we have. I said, I want to see. They said, okay, let's go. And then in the afternoon, they came to pick me up and they said, Sadhguru, we've gotten a slot for you to speak in the spiritual expo. I said, great. For the first time, I'm in the United States. I thought, spiritual expo? And I went there. A huge tent and uh, when we went in there, uh, country music was going on full of full blast. Uh, obviously, this was a group which wouldn't find any other paid stage. <laughs> Maybe in the evening, more 
uh, known groups would come in the afternoon. It's an empty stage, anybody can use the sound system. So they were banging away. <laughs> I said, okay, spiritual expo, but it's okay, music is just a cultural thing, let me focus on the spiritual expo. I went inside, somebody is selling a spiritual bath soap. Said, wow! There's somebody is selling a spiritual stone, a pebble from somewhere which is spiritual. Like this roots, herbs, this, that. I don't know if there was a toothbrush <laughs> Then I thought, oh, this is like the Indian shandy. You know, in the Indian villages there is a shandy. Sunday market or Wednesday market or Monday markets like this. So here there will be all kinds of exotic things being sold. There will be a root just this much, just like this, it should not be straight, you know, it should be. I can't do that with my finger. <laughs> so if you take this, this is a root that could make you invisible. You must go grind this along with the left jawbone of a female whale <laughs> and the whale should be alive. <laughs> that means you actually swam in there, cut a piece of the jaw and came and together, if you rub this together along with something and there is a mantra, if you do this and then that paste, if you put it in the upper palate, you will become invisible. Actually, if you go into the mouth of the whale, you will become invisible <laughs> Anyway, then I saw, oh, this is like an Indian shandy. There they were selling all kinds of exotic incense also. Incense has a certain impact, but don't overdo it. Don't think it'll determine your spiritual nature. It can change the atmosphere a little bit. It should not be over uh, certified. It has certain impact. One can use it in a sensible manner, but these days incense is being made with chemical stuff. Best you don't burn those things. It's very, very important before you have enough chemical thing happening on the street, in the industry, in the factory floor that you may be working, wherever, there's enough chemicals floating around. At least within your house, do not burn chemically made incense because I think that is almost seventy percent or eighty percent of what's available in the market today is chemical. You must take it out before you burn it. It's uh, very, very important because within the closed enclosures, if you burn chemicals, well, the negative impact of that is very, very big. So it must be natural resin or certain other oils, essential oils and things which can make a difference. Uh, a mild difference, if you need that kind of a difference, it, it helps definitely. So uh, we will leave it here and uh, We'll meet you in a week's time. Stay healthy, stay alive. Hello? Hello, you promised me that you will stay alive. Because uh, <laughs> I want you to know life has not come with a guarantee. There's no guarantee. No, Sadhguru, I've taken my insurance. <laughs> That's good for others, not for you. Life insurance is not good for you. This is an arrangement made for others who may need that financial help when you're gone. It's very important to understand this, that the nature of life is so robust, at the same time it's so fragile. It is neither this nor that. Is it fragile or is it robust? You cannot decide. Hmm? What is feeling like this? Tomorrow morning, becomes like that, yes or no? So don't take… make any conclusions about this. Oh, I'm young, what will happen to me? I'm healthy, what will happen to me? It's not like that. 
you could be healthy and dead tomorrow morning. Hmm? You could be ninety and you may wait for everybody else to go. You never know. So life is a constant attention, little, little things. How we eat, how we breathe, how we sit, how we stand, how others are breathing, that also you must notice now, <laughs> all right? See, the spiritual sadhana was only about how you breathe. Now the virus has raised the bar. You also need to notice how others are breathing. <laughs> this is very good, heightening of the bar, you know. Standards are going up in the world, so uh, stay alive and keep everybody around you alive. This is important. This all we have to do. This virus pandemic, this crisis, this is all we have to do. You stay alive and make sure everybody around you alive. Sometimes maybe you will have to be unpleasant to keep them alive because there are people who are like this then you have to mask them, you know? Hello? You will have to mask them, maybe with words, maybe with something or some step, whatever you want to take. But it's all right, one or two unpleasant words is better than attending funerals, isn't it? Hello? It's all right to say a few unpleasant things if necessary, with a big smile on your face, which they cannot see. <laughs> so, it's all right, but not good to attend funerals. Minimum number should happen, hello? And uh, hope… I don't know, I don't have statistics about it, but maybe I'm… I'm just thinking and hoping Maybe people have also planned not to have too many children in this time, hopefully. Because pregnant women and post-pregnant, uh, you know, post-pregnancy after delivery, a woman is a far more susceptible to these kind of things. It's best to avoid that till this entire pandemic is gone, okay? Whenever it'll be gone. See, I have two agendas. Hello? Two agendas. Reducing population does not mean killing people. Reducing population means postponing birth. Hello? Yes or no? So, because now we are taking care to postpone death, we must also postpone birth. Let's use the pandemic as a way of uh, let's control on everything. So, uh, wonderful to be with you. <laughs> so. So. Yoga, yoga, yogeshwaraya Bhuta, bhuta, bhuteshwaraya Kale 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 Shwaraya Shiva Shiva Sarveshwaraya Shambha Shambha Uh, can I come there among you? Yeah? yeah? You won't sneeze, huh? <laughs>